So we're on page tests on the right side. And we're looking at a paragraph that starts on the bottom of the right column, Kahuna. He says, Kabbalah, to receive the Dham, Ve'avodos Shachrea, and Holocha Saddam, and Zrika Saddam, Enum Ksheris El Bakoin Kosha. And that's a quote from the Mishnah that says, Mi Kabbalah Ve'elach Mitzvahs Kahuna. In Zvachim Adaf Lamid Beit, Shenemar, Ve'shachad Es Ben Abakar, and then it says, Vikrivu Bine Arona Koinim Saddam. And the word Vikrivu is referring to Kabbalah Saddam and anything beyond Kabbalah Saddam. So all that requires Kahuna. So whereas Vishachat doesn't require Kahuna, we had a long discussion yesterday about whether it is an Avod, it's not an Avod, it has different dimensions. But from Vikrivu and on, it's got to be Bine Arona Koinim. The mitzvah requires that the Kohen kosher receives all the dam. And that's based on the Pasuk in Vayikra Dalit. It says, We ace kol dam hapar. And the emphasis here is on kol dam hapar. Yishpoch el yisod mizbach ha'olo. Now, the truth is that that posseg is not referring to Kabbalah Saddam, but rather to Shvich Hashirayim, which means that whatever is left in the receptacle in the Mizra, after he's already done, after he's already implemented the Zrika, that leftover has to be poured on the Yisod HaMizbeach. But nevertheless, Al Pitor Shval Peh, the Drosha is that this pasuk includes a requirement of kol adam, not with regard to shvicha of shirayim, but rather with regard to kabbalah sana. And the reason why Torah Shemal had to reinterpret the pasuk and take it out of context, and the kol adam is not referring to shvicha, but rather to kabbalah, is because it's impossible to take the Torah literally because how could you possibly refer to Shvicha Saddam as Kol Adam? I mean, he's already done the Zrika, so he doesn't have Kol Adam. So how can the Torah command me to be Shofek Kol Adam subsequent to Kabbalah Saddam and Zrika Saddam? So if Eino Inyan le Shirayim le Shvicha, then Tnei le Inyan Kabbalah. So he needs, his goal is to get all the dam into the keli. And what he's going to have to do is, he's going to have to take some of the blood vessels of the behemoth of the animal and he's going to have to, so to speak, lift them up in order to guarantee that all the dam will, will come out so that he can be macabre, kol, domo. And if you look in footnote number kuf, ayin vav, on the bottom, he quotes the Rambam, and then he quotes the Karen Ora. And there's another logical reason for this. He says, Kedesha Adam is Kabul bin a Korban Mamish, low Hefse culture. Now, I'm not exactly sure where the Hefse would be, but somehow at some point there would be a Hefse between the, the Vridim and the Dam, unless he lifts up the Vridim in such a way that he can pour directly from the Vridea carbon into the airspace, and then it'll fall into the Kli, and that will give you Kabbalah's Kol Adam directly from the Tzavra Behema without any Hefzik. Torah HaShochit Lagdiyas HaSakin Lamalo, 
as soon as he completes his shechita, he has to make sure to lift the knife up, because otherwise, if the knife is in a downward position, then some of the dam that is attached to the socket will fall into the kli, immediately lift it up. So that there won't be any dam from the sock and falling into the kli. Because once the dam is connected to the kli, then it's nifsa. It becomes possible. And then you'll have a mixture of puzzle and dam with kosher dam in the kli. Now, why is the dam attached to the sock in possible? And the answer is because the dam did not go directly into the Kli, into the Mizrach, right? The Kli Kabbalah, but it rather got attached to the sock in. And the dam that falls into the Mizrach and is kosher has to be Dam that came directly from the from the Tzavar Abba. Once he lifts up the sakin even a little bit, and some of the dam goes up onto the sakin. If he doesn't continue to lift up the sakin, some of that dam is going to inevitably fall into the Mizra. And in addition to this, as another stopgap measure to guarantee that none of the dam that went up comes down again into the into the Mizra, sakin. He should make sure to wipe off the sakin of its dam. Be often sheipol adam me'ala sakin mi'chutz le'mizuk v'lo letoch. So instead of taking the knife and swiping it over the rim of the mizrak in such a way that now the dam is going to go into the mizrak, he should take the sakin and push it forward in a forward direction, wiping it, swiping it over the Sfas HaMizrach, such that now the dam on the Sakin will fall outside the Mizrach and not inside the Mizrach. But that dam is dam possible. Now, why Bichlal does he need to wipe off the dam on the Mizrach? And in the footnote, he writes, "Mishum shegnai hu la horid es hadam she niskadesh bekli shores lekli chol." So again, I can't tell you about all the details, but the basic fundamental principle is that he doesn't want dam that was already sanctified in the kli shores, meaning in the sakim, to go into a kli chol. But again, I can't fill in the details here because where is the dam going to go into? It's not going into the Mizrach. Maybe he should take another klishares and let it go into another klishares. But he's explaining kinuach, why he needs kinuach. The only way I can explain in my limited capacity here as to why you need kinuach is because from the kinuach, it's going to go into another klishares. Nishbach. And as we said before, the dam has to go directly from the Tzavar Abahema into the Klishares. The Lo Shiyah Dam, the Mokom Acher Kodem Kabol. The dam should not take any sort of a trip and make any stops before it goes directly into the Klishares. Dam Shoyah the Mokom Acher. I can't read the next word here. Can you read it out? Mokom Acher. Oh, Lifnei, it should be. You have to add a yud. Lifnei shi gia leklishos. Can go nishpap and etzavar la ritzpa. So the dam went directly from the tzavar abeima onto the ritzpa sazara. And it didn't go directly into the klishos, into the bizrach. Eno dam roi lizrika. It becomes posel lizrika. 
In other words, Nishpach, if the dam falls onto the Ritzva, he cannot collect it and, and put it back into the Kli. Now, the din would change if it was Nitzbach after it re- after it was already received in the Kli. Let's say after he collected, he received the dam in the Kli in the Mizrach. Now the Mizrach topples over and some of the dam is Nishpah. That's already a whole different story. Ach im niskabel hadam v'kli shores v'yachkach nishpas hadam in a Kli Osvo v'kosh. Once there was already a kiddush, and the dam was sanctified by its being received in a klisha. So if it spills, then so in such a case, the dam retains its status as kodesh. So if it was nishpach in a way that the kabbalah did not receive the dam directly from the tzara behema, that's possible. If it falls on the ground of the azor. But if it was already received, you already have a full-fledged Kabbalah Saddam in a Klishares. Then after that, once the Dam is sanctified, even though it fell on the Ritzbah Sazora, we can recollect it. And it's kosher because it's already been sanctified and the Kabbalah was a perfectly valid Kabbalah. But Yesh Min Rishom Shekosav, Che Mishpach Chelek Min Adam, Badayin Nishar Bakli Dam, so we're talking about where there was a Kabbalah of all the Dam in the Kli Kabbalah, meaning the Mizrach, and it was Nishbach, but half of the Dam remained in the Kli. In this case, there's no Mitzvah to collect the other half of the Dam that fell on the Ritzbach. And why is that? Because he still has Dam in the Kli. And once he has dam in the kli, he's not obligated to collect the dam that fell subsequent to the Kabbalah on the Ritzvah Sazor. But in Ratzel Yosfo, fine. Its status will be kosher if he decides to collect the dam. But Nishvach kol adam in a kli al is then mitzvah Yosfo kideshu l'kai mazrika. If after the Kabbalah, all the dam fell out of the Kli onto the Ritzvah, then it's not a matter of Ratzah lo Ratzah. He's obligated to collect the dam in order to facilitate Zrika Saddam. Now we have a Psul of Nishpach in the case of Chatas Oath. The halacha of Kabbalah, Kabbalah Saddam, the Kli Shores, bin Mizrach, was never given, was never formulated with regard to Chattas Ov. Chattas Ov, we do, you know, Mitsui, we, we, you know, we, 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 we squeeze the Ov against the Mizbeach in order to get its dam out, but there was never a halacha requirement of Kabbalah the Kli. So the Gemara wants to know what happens in the case of Nishbach Adam mitzavar chatos ha'ov al ritzpah. Can he collect it or not? There is a mitzvah of zrika, and can he fulfill the mitzvah of zrika by collecting the dam that fell from the tzavar ha'ov onto the ritzpah? And one side of the Gemara is to say that it's kosher and he's allowed to collect the dam from the Ritzpa, even though it fell directly from the Tzavra Oath, because the requirement and shall we say the psul, right, the invalidation of Nishbach applies specifically to Chatos Behema, where there's a loch of Kabbalah Beklisharis. However, lo nemar b'chatas ha'ov kabbalah b'klishares. And therefore, it could po- possibly be that there's no psul of nishma. Because who cares if it didn't go into a kli? It doesn't go into a kli. However, there's one side of the Gemara to say that tzavar ha'ov k'klishares. 
that the tzavar itself engenders kedusha, just like a klisha is. The imkain who kamo nishpach adami behema. There's no difference between nishpach and behema and nishpach and oath, because in both cases there's a requirement of kabbalah. Just that in behema the kabbalah is the kabbalah adam and klisha is. In the case of chatos ha'ov, we have a substitute for kapola. And that is the tzavra of itself. Fantastic finish here, that the tzavra of is a kabbalah of a klisharis, and the status of the tzavra of is that of a klisharis. Mind me. Now we'll talk about olas ha'of. The olas ha'of nishpach min ha'of al ritzpah bevadai ein yochol lematzos domo mikli. Umishum avodas mitzui shenemer be olas ha'of he mitzui guf ha'of al mizbeach. So that if there's a situation of nishpach after the shkita of olas ha'of and the dam falls on the ritzpa, there's no possibility of doing what's called mitzui dama. Because mitzui dama requires the gufa of from the gufa of onto the mizbeach. That's called mitzui dama. And this leads us to Daf test, to Daf U. Dam haroil kavolo hugak dam hanefesh. So I believe that when we were learning the introduction to Menachos, if I'm not mistaken, we had different categories of dam. Certainly when we were learning Masech the Yoma. One of the categories of dam is called dam hanefesh. Another is called dam hatamsis. And then we have something called dam or. We have another category called Dama Muvla Bei Vari. So there are many categories of Dam. Which Dam should be received in a Mizrak, in a Klisharis? Which is the Dama Royal Kabbal? That's called Dama Nefesh. Then there's something called Dam Tamsis. And if I'm not mistaken, Dam Tamtis, I have to review this, is the Dam that comes out immediately with Shechita. And after the Dam Tamtis, then comes the Dam Anefesh. Then it comes, it's like spurts forward. First it's like drips and dribbles. And then there's a spurt of Dam, which is called Dam Hanefesh. But we have three categories of Dam is Dam Tamtis that we said, not Dama Nefesh. We have Dama Or, which is circulated in the skin. However, we're not sure about Dama Muvla Be Avarin. Let's say, for example, the animal has a heart, and the heart is full of blood, it absorbs blood, but it can be any part of the animal. What is the status of that dam? Well, dama move the bevar. And the Gemara on Daf Chavav vacillates back and forth about this point. Intuitively, we would say that that dam is dama nefesh. Right now, it's absorbed in one of the internal organs, but that's the dam that keeps the animal alive. Now it's dead, but that. that Now, Dam Tamsis, we said, is not Dama Nefesh. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I got it right. This is going to be embarrassing if I got it wrong. What is Dam Tamsis that's excluded and disqualified? It's not Dama Nefesh. Immediately with the incision, some black, dark blood comes out of the animal. 
but not but not in spurts. Then immediately after that black blood that comes out, Yotze Dam Adon, red blood comes out, but nevertheless, we're still not ready for Dam Anefesh. It hasn't begun to spurt out with a force. It's what's called Shisisa. Shisisa means like drips and drabs. Right? When something flows in a spur, it, it has like an arc to it, right? It goes at a distance. But this is Shasisa. Now, Acherkath, now we're up to stage number three in the process. That's called Mekalech Adam It begins to spur at a distance. The Acherkath Shuv Chodzer Umsmai Fiyotze B'Shasisa. And now at stage number four, we go back to the blood diminishing in its volume and it goes down, it comes out by drips and drabs. So he says the fine Dam Shachar, the first Dam, that very dark blood, ain't no dominant. We know that Dam Chachar is not Dam Nefesh, and it's not Royal Kabbalah. We know that Dam Tamsis, which is the Dam that comes out at the end of the whole process, that drips down and has no force to it, no stream to it, that's not Dam Nefesh, that's Dam Tamsis. And that's also outside the purview of the mitzvah. Then we get to the dam ha'adom, ha'yotzi v'shisisa, miyad li'achar adam shachar. Immediately after the black blood comes red blood. And on that we have machlokes between Tosis and the Rambam. According to Shita Tosis, that's not dam ha'nefesh. We need that spurt, you know, that energy, that arc, in order for it to be dam ha'nefesh. But the Ramam sheet is that even this red blood that comes out of the animal early, early on, gam dam ze dam So according to the Rambam, we're excluding one and four. But we're including two and three. According to Tosis, we're excluding one, two, and four. And only number three is called Dam Tamsis. Do, do we have that, Steve? Does that make sense to you? Should I go over it? According to Tosfus, we're excluding everything except for the third dam. First dam is Shachar, Bishsisa. Second dam is, is uh, Adom, Bishsisa. The fourth dam is Dam, Adom, Bishsisa. All those are excluded. The only dam that's included is Dam HaMakaleach, which is Dam Tamsis. Um, which is, I'm sorry, Dam HaNefesh. Sorry, thanks for... According to the Rabbam, on the other hand, we're accepting in the broader definition of Dhamma Nefesh, number two and number three. So the Dham Adom that comes out after the Dham Shachar B'Shesisa is also considered Dhamma Nefesh. 
everybody agrees that the dam at the beginning, which is shachar, or the dam at the end, which is bishisa, is not dam anefesh. Let's mind the pole. Now, the achar shen is kabbal adam, the kli, a coin oches diad yumino is kli achores, im adam molicho al mizbech with zarko sham. The halacha zu, this is my folks from Shimon and Chachom, if I remember correctly, let's see if I'm right. Nechliku bot tanoi. Im yecholo leosos, leosos al yidei olochas hayad, o chezes es kliashores, af she'en oholech biran. So in other words, the shechita took place at close proximity to Mizbeach, such that all he has to do is stretch his arm out with the Mizrach that has the dominant. He doesn't have to walk with his feet to the Mizbeach. Is that fine? According to one sheet of Tanoim, it's fine. He doesn't need a halicha. He doesn't have to walk towards the Mizbeach. It's sufficient that he gets the dam towards the Mizbeach. He can stretch out his arm because he's so close. To the and that's fine. Oh, the other sheet of the Tanoim, because I think the Tanakhama is that Alichas Hakoin Beregel Mizbeach Shakli Biyado Shma Olocha. That Olochas Hadam requires that he walk towards the Mizbeach while he's holding the Kli. And La Locha, Olocha Shalo Beregel Eina Halocha. We're going to require that he walk towards the Mizbeach. The im holicho shelo beregel ela mizbeach. According to our pesach halacha, if he simply stretched his arm out to the mizbeach without halicho beraglov, tsarach lachso liachorov. The dam is not possible, but he hasn't yet achieved the mitzvah and the avod of halacha. He's got to walk backwards in order to walk forwards. So let's say, for example, he stood in his own place and he would zorik the dam from a distance and bullseye, he hit the mizbeah. No, no, no. That's absurd. That's not avodah saulach. And finally, we'll finish up and this reflects the sheet of that you need a halach of a regal. So it's not efshel levatla, because what are you going to tell me? Well, you're standing close enough to this bath, you can just throw it onto this bath. No, 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 no. That's not acceptable. We need a locha mamish, viragla. So that makes him to an avodashi efcha levatla. This is going to be a subject of debate amongst the Rishon, whether or not you could be mavatil avodas halach. Let's make a note of where we got up to. Up to Zrikas Adam.